Morning, gang. Happy Friday morning. Friday, July 9th. The infamous day we've all not been waiting for for months. Today is Cyber Polygon. And by the time you're watching this, it's already going on or it's already over. Uh, because it starts at 5 a.m. Eastern Time. Okay, And it's interesting. I was kind of going through the agenda here taking a look, and I, I, I find it kind of humorous because supposedly the speaking engagements are about six hours, and each one of the topics is a half an hour long. But I kind of wanted to, to touch on the schedule here and just kind of go through it and you know, give you a little bit of thought on how this is kind of weird. So, you know, of course it starts off, like I said, it's 5 a.m. Eastern, it's noon in Europe where they're doing this, okay? Uh, but it starts off at noon, their time, uh, with Herman Greff, who's the CEO of Spare, which is a Russian bank, okay? He's going to be the opening speaker, all right? So he opens for 10 minutes or whatever it is. Then you have the welcoming mark, the remarks uh, from Mikhail Mishutsin, who's the Prime Minister of the Russian Federation and a representative of the Russian Federation at the European Court of Human Rights, Okay, so, you know, interesting title for somebody at the WEF, okay? And then, of course, we have everybody's favorite buddy here, Klaus Schwab, who, of course, is the founder of the World Economic Forum. So then they get into the, the meat, meat and potatoes of the meeting. And the first topic, first half an hour, is ecosystems as a new way of global integration, okay? And this is Herman Graf, again, CEO of Spare. And Steve Wozniak, Apple, okay? But why are we talking about ecosystems? Okay, again, we're talking about globalization. So, you know, we've got to throw in that save the universe or save the world type thing, but on a technology basis. So you kind of think about it and go, okay, how is technology saving the planet? But, you know, just... Is, you know, what is, I mean, again, I'll go back to when we all got locked down here last year and the, you know, the tree huggers were all screaming, hey, look at this, you know, pollution is down because nobody's driving their cars, everybody's working from home. Okay, maybe that's what they get into, but I'm going to try to watch some, if not all of this. So then the next topic, a half an hour later, is the digital state of tomorrow. Okay, and this is Ryan Chilcott, who's the independent global affairs and economics broadcaster from Bloomberg and CNN. Okay, Roger Halbeer, who's the security advisor, chief security advisor of Microsoft, and Igor Lyapunov, who's the vice president for info, information security from Rost, Rostelecom, okay, a Russian security firm. Okay, we know they're basically running the show here on this. Uh, but this is, and I'm going to read the description to you here real quick. Technological progress is not only driving the development of business, but also entire nations. E-government and online service aggregators are designed to improve the quality of our life. Thus, a metropolis resident can make an appointment with a doctor or consult with a legal advisor through a single window portal. What is the future of a digital state citizen? What challenges may the digitalization of government structures pose? Will the evolution of ecosystems in both the public and private sectors contribute to economic growth? Now, I don't know about anybody else, but I don't want to be a digital state citizen. I kind of like being a U.S. citizen, all right? You know, a physical land. I don't want to be part of, like I've said many times, Gatesville, Bezosburg, you know, Zuckerberg town, whatever it's going to be. I, you know, this is not the goals here that I'm looking for. Sorry, my nose itches. So then we get into the fun ones. The next one is the new world, new currency. How to make the financial system resilient as digital currencies proliferate. Okay. And this is Matthew Blake, who's the head of financial and monetary systems initiatives for the, for the World Economic Forum. Uh, Mark Barnett, who's the president of MasterCard Europe. Matthew Dill, who's the global head of strategic par partnerships and ventures uh, with Visa. And Alexei Zabotkin, who's the deputy governor of the Bank of Russia. Okay. Now, 
new world, new currency, really. So we're going to start talking about a one world currency here, apparently. And I, I kind of find it interesting that this is going down the day after that Wells Fargo, one of the biggest banks in the United States, just nixed everybody's lines of credit. Okay, said, okay, if you've got a line of credit, it's now just a flat loan. You get to pay it off, but you can't borrow against it anymore. My guess on all of that, this is Wells Fargo trying to limit their risk in losing money. Okay, that I have a feeling that their thought is, okay, something's going to collapse here and we don't want to be giving out any more money because we don't think we're going to get it back. Because after all, how do banks make money? By people borrowing money and paying interest. Why would the bank stop loaning out money and just try to collect on what they've already got? Logically, that does not make sense. Okay, They're trying to completely mitigate their risk. Do they know something we don't know about this? Okay, speculation. The next one kind of throws me its direct contact with the ISS, the International Space Station. Okay, and I mean, you've got a couple of cosmonauts, you know, Oleg, Oleg Novitsky and uh, Pyotr Dubrov, uh, who are a couple of cosmonauts. Okay, so they're going to talk about outer space. Okay, yippee. I'm a little more concerned about what's going on at home than what's going on on Mars. Next one is combating ransomware and developing an international response. Okay. Craig Jones, who's the cybercrime director for Interpol. Michael Daniel, who's the president and CEO for Cyber, Cyber Threat Alliance. And Teresa Walsh, who's the global head of intelligence for the FSISAC. Okay. Now, ransomware. God knows that's all going on right now. Okay. How in the world do they think that they're going to make this a world issue, that the world's all going to come together? Because the ransomware we have now, Revel or Our Evil or whatever you want to call about it, you know, they're, we're not getting, the ransomware attacks aren't coming from some far off planet. They're coming from within the world. Okay. So how is the world going to get together to stop this when it's one country basically doing it to another? You know, so again, the only way they're going to do it is by submission where every country comes together and says, gee, we're all going to fight together against these rogue people. Well, you have rogue nations that are doing this. So how in the world is this going to work? Okay. A big problem. Then the crux, okay? Resilient supply chains. Protect people by protecting businesses. This is, this is the exercise that they're going to do, okay? This is on the supply chain uh, and crashing a supply chain and see how it happens. Now, who's running this one? Trolls Erding, uh, who's the chairman of Bullwall Incorporated, uh, and he's also the uh, chairman of the advisory ward for cybersecurity for the World Economic Forum. And then the speakers, you have Chris McCurdy, who's a VP for IBM, Dorit Dorr, who's a VP of products for Checkpoint Software Technologies, Kevin Simser, who's a COO for Trend Micro, and Eugene Kaspersky. We all know that name. He's the CEO of Kaspersky. Okay. Uh, but they're going to, this, this is the crux. This is the part that we're all worried about, where they're, you know, crash the internet, you know, potentially crash the grid to see how companies react, how, how a supply chain works. Okay. And when you have an international supply chain, which most everything we have now is, okay, because walk through your house and see how much stuff is made in China, made in Taiwan, made in Venezuela, made wherever the hell, okay? You're going to find very few things that are made in the USA. So that would be a domestic supply chain. The international supply chain is the big important one. Uh, so that's what to watch. And then the last part, uh, well, I take it back, not the last part. Uh, next one is the role of Interpol in, in fighting global cybercrime. Interpol, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, and they're going to have Jürgen Stock, who's the Secretary General of Interpol, speak. Okay. Last time I checked, Interpol really doesn't exist in the United States, so this isn't going to hold work. And where does a lot of who's the victim of a lot of cybercrime? Oh, the United States. All right. Then one I find very interesting. Uh, this is four hours in. The role of the Red Cross in creating a safe, safe, safe cyberspace. Now. 
Let's think about who the Red Cross is. The Red Cross is disaster relief. The Red Cross is who shows up when there's a hurricane, wildfires, tornadoes, you know, a building collapsing in Florida. The Red Cross shows up, okay? This is it. You know, handing out bottles of water, food, shelter, whatever, helping people with that. What is the red, what kind of disaster in cyberspace would the Red Cross help with? This, this one really throws a curveball at me, okay? Because obviously whatever happens in cyberspace then affects whatever happens in the real world, okay? So are they talking about the Red Cross is going to help when something cra- when, when the banking system crashes and then uh, the Red Cross is going to be there to help people with cash? I don't know. Uh, but why is the Red Cross involved in safe cyberspace. Okay. Uh, then, of course, they go into international regulations on the web. Uh, they say it's, it's necessary, but is it possible? It's impossible, okay, because there's no way communist China and the United States, for example, are going to agree on any sort of regulations. I mean, hell, China, North Korea, let's use that one, okay? You know, you can't do any. You can't look at anything outside of North Korea on the web. I mean, it's penalty of death looking at something outside of North Korea on the web. You know, China's not that far, but you know, hell, you have to worship Xi Jinping. You can't wor- worship God in China. Uh, you know, that's a that's a punishable by death if you don't put Xi Jinping up as God. So how the hell are you going to have, you know? international regulations that everybody's going to abide by. I mean, you know, let's talk about, oh, the Paris Accord. Okay, well, nobody's abiding by those. You know, you think you're going to get it on the internet. Uh, five o'clock in, cyberbullying, how can we protect children from digital threats? Well, that's a parent's issue. That's not a government issue, okay? You know, keep your kid off of porn sites and stop having, you know, stop letting them listen to, you know, rap music and, you know, Cardi B and all this crap and, you know, we'll be all right. You know, so, I mean, you know, this is kind of what they're going through. But, you know, like I said, the the biggest issue is the uh, supply chain, all right? And, you know, as they say, the supply chain, the technical exercise, the participants will practice, practice, Mitigating a target supply chain attack on a corporate ecosystem. Okay, now I'm betting that ecosystem that they're gonna that would ever be targeted certainly isn't going to be, you know, Joe's Auto Supply, you know, AutoZone. Let's just make it a little bit bigger and say it's AutoZone. You know, where everybody's gonna go get car parts. Okay, that's not gonna be it. It's like, oh, what what eco what corporate ecosystem are they gonna take down? Hmm, I don't know, Google. You know, uh, you know, take down take down the ISPs or something like that. That's you know, another corporate ecosystem. Oh, let's take out the grid. Those those are the ones that we worry about. It's not going to be, you know, where you get your car parts or you know, some where where they make makeup or something like that. It's going to be an interesting day. I will watch as much of this as I can. Inevitably, there's going to be a lot of places to get information. If any of you guys are watching any of this, see any of this information or whatever, find anything good that other people are talking about that we need to share, because obviously there's one of me and I can't pay attention to everything. Uh, you know, if y'all hear some information, please let me know so we can get it out to the masses. Uh, but yeah, so inevitably I'm going to wind up seeing you again today. So have a good Friday morning. We'll talk to y'all soon. Pinball out.